this week in baseball player profiles as we profile the class of 21. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in this morning. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and uh, uh, tell everybody who you are. Uh, I'm Alex Wrong. Um, I go to Hanover Central and I've been to Little Bet uh, Community College. Okay. Uh, I'm Colson Seary. I go to Derby High School and I'm committed to Butler County. My name is Kate Snodgrass. I go to Derby High School and I'm committed to Neosha. So, congratulations to all three of you guys getting committed uh, and moving on. Uh, so, let, I just wanted to start off with uh, COVID. How did that affect you personally right before, you know, when your high school season was just getting ready to start and then didn't know what was going to go happen? How did that affect you personally, Alex? Uh, well, it was difficult because, you know, you don't have access to facilities. It was just me, my team, my backyard. And um, I didn't know if I was getting better or not. And then, you know, that you have the flow of scrimmages with high school into the season. You didn't have that this year. So it's kind of hard to, you know, get into the flow of things once the season started. All right. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same thing, just uh, having to take so much time off. Um, even though we got to play sooner in the summer, there still was that big uh, slot of time where we just couldn't do anything, couldn't go to the house, couldn't go in, couldn't do nothing. So that was really stressful, really tough. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I really sucked. I mean, it took away a season that I thought we were, I was pretty confident about and we were going to be pretty good. But yeah, just having all that that time where you're just hitting off the tee, it just kind of made you want to get back in the cages as soon as possible. So did it, did it like worry you guys at all to, uh, for colleges? Did you guys think, oh man, what's, what's going to happen? Did you guys like feel that at, at all? Uh, in a way, I mean, I, I had already been talking to, uh, McVeigh, Coach McVeigh at Butler County and we're already getting something in the making, mm -hmm. so I wasn't too worried about it, but going on visits and touring the facilities and everything was definitely a big part of uh, me wanting to go there, seeing what they have, mm -hmm. academics, classrooms, stuff like right. that, and so that was a, a little bit of a bump in the road. All right, what about you guys? Did you guys feel a little bit of pressure? I would say so. Um, I, I was kind of worried about how recruiting would be and if coaches would be able to see me, mm -hmm. uh, so I went out and recorded a video just to make sure that I did some exposure, um, but I, I was really just concerned about you know who would find me. Right. Yeah, I was a little worried at the beginning, and then luckily enough, we had a pretty good summer and got a lot of games in, so that really helped. Okay. So this is really a question, real easy answer for you guys. Last year's high school team, how do you think you guys would have done? We would have won state. There's no doubt. Yeah. Hundred percent. You guys are four A, right? Five A. Five A. Five A. Five A. I'm sorry. So you think you would have won state? 100%. 100%. 100%. What about you guys? We definitely would have been pretty good. We definitely would have made it to the finals. At the yeah, least. but it would have been a good game to meet us at campus. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, Tanner Tanner was on the show, and he brought that up, that he his goal was going defeated again and run it again, run it back. So uh, I, I told him Derby would have been in his way. There's a couple other teams up in Kansas City, and he – he still thought he had the confidence in it. Um, so what are you guys doing now to prepare for high school season? We'll start with Kate. Uh, I've been working out every day after school and then been in the cages two to three times a week and then coming to the fielding practices every week. Here. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've been working out in the middle of the day when I don't have classes until the end of the day. Uh, I've been hitting once, twice a day <coughs> when I can. Uh, coming to the outfield and the pitching classes when I can. So. Uh, and Alex? Uh, I've been in the weight room. You know, um, I've been going to a hitting instructor, getting my swing uh, consistent. And then the biggest thing I focused on is a drawing program with my arms drawn in. Okay. Um, so this year's high school team, what are your expectations for your team this year? <clears throat> I think we'll have a good run. You know, we got a really strong senior class that can lead, really good junior class, and we got some good young talent, the sophomores. I, I think we got a chance. Okay. I mean, we're – Almost full roster with seniors uh, returning, at least returning me, Kate, Reed, Luke, all those guys. So, I mean, if we don't win state, big problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, I think you have like 13 seniors this year, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Got pitching depth. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Even with the juniors like Luke Westerman, we have that depth from younger guys coming in. So. Oh, good, good, good. Um, so now we're going to move on into the summer a little bit here. Uh, what was your first thought of the merger 
when we put when uh, 316 and Sluggers announced the merger? Uh, I was really excited. You know, we picked up so many new coaches, uh, so many more materials for, like for the facilities and everything. Um, I just thought it was a great opportunity to you know get better coaching and, and become better. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I honestly don't think I could have said it better. It was uh, just the opportunities that all the new coaches and new eyes and new uh, lessons that we can get from everybody has just been amazing. So. Yeah, not gonna lie, I was kind of. I was kind of worried about it at first. Well, not like worried, but like, I don't know. I didn't know how I felt about it. And then I late, like, soon, like, met all the coaches and stuff, and they were really good, and like, it was really good. Well, the good thing about it is, is, is um, the majority of those guys either coached here or played here before uh, with Stanford. So he, I kind of knew once we put this together, I think it helps us to get back to where we were back in the early 2000s, middle of the 2000s era, to where we are going to start getting the better talent in the area and surrounding areas to come to one place. And uh, so we can go back out and, and be that dominant team. Because um, I can tell you this, I mean, I enjoy playing them, but I also hate it, you know, if we lost to them or they, we beat them, having one team bet, one team really good, one team okay. I, I kind of like the idea that, like you guys said, the talent level, once we can merge some players together, I think it increased us, made us better, talent-wise from top to bottom. I, I would do, I do agree with that. So, um, you guys are going to different colleges, okay? So, so uh, we're gonna start Colson. Why'd you choose Butler? Um, well, the first reason that Butler came up on my map was obviously what well, Jackson goes there. So I'm like, uh, I might as well look at it. Be a pretty cool, pretty cool school. And Jackson's your brother. Yeah, uh, pretty cool school. It's close to home. Uh, they have exactly what I want to do in high school or in college. Um, the facilities are great. They just redid their baseball field. The coaches. What really stood out to me was the coaches really had a uh, just a winning attitude. Like if you're not going to work for us, if you're not going to work hard for us, then you're not going to play. And I couldn't ask for anything more from my coaches than that. So. Okay. And Cade, why did you choose Neosha? Uh, ever since I was little, one of my brother's friends went there, so they've always been on my map, and I've always wanted to go there, and they just have a great reputation for getting kids on to the next level, and they have great facilities, and it's just a great place. Okay. And Alex? Well, the biggest thing for me was that uh, they had a really good physical therapy program, um, and then, you know, the dorm rooms are really nice, and Coach Copeland, uh, he, was really, he was really impressive that, you know, he's, he's a young coach, and he really wants to win. He's going to do everything he can to win and, you know, make us better play better as a team. Well, I know I told you this right before the show. You realize you're the first player in the 26 years to go to Labette yep. um, from here. Uh, so uh, I expect you to start something. Uh, I really do. I mean, you, you're the first one to get our foot in the door there, and uh, hopefully we can have some guys follow you on in there from, from here. So uh, I want you to do well. Okay. Uh, so speaking of uh, colleges, uh, and, and what do you – where would you like to go after the college you're attending next year? What's your next goal, and what do you plan on studying? Uh, I'm not really sure, but you know, I'd like to become a physical therapist. So I'd like to go to a school that can you know, help me get there. Mm -hmm. um, whether that be a D2 or D1, you know, I could go to. Uh, I would like to go to Southwestern, Oklahoma State after. Okay. That's an option, but uh, as of right now, I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, obviously the goal after JUCO is to go to D1. That's part of the reason you go to JUCO, to get better, mm -hmm. to get looks at. Um, Ole Miss. Ole Miss? And what do you want to study? Sports marketing. Sports marketing? Yeah. Okay. And Jay? Yeah, I'm not sure what I want to study after, but, I mean, the yeah, other goal, like you said, to go to D1, obviously, and my dream school would be Ole Miss, too. But. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> So we got Derby going to the other show, Derby going to Ole Miss. All right, that's cool. That's cool with me. I, I, I'd like to see that happen. That'd be cool. Um, what advice, and we're going to start with you, Kate, could you give to the class of 22 to prepare for the recruiting process that we're getting ready to start, that we started through already? Um, I mean, just never take, like, a bunch of time off. Just, like, always keep getting better, keep getting better, and make sure you put yourself out there on the Internet and make sure you can get seen. Yeah, just put your name out there. Get to actually email or text or call college coaches, and don't wait for them to text or call you. And just ask them, like, can I send you this? Can I send you this? Hey, could you take a look at this? 
anything you can do to get looked at by college coaches, the better. All right, Alex. Uh, I'd say one of the most important things is um, you know, making videos, saying that out there. Especially, I don't know when this COVID era is gonna, gonna leave, but it's hard for coaches to come and see you. So I think a video is really important. All right. Well, with the JUCOs getting another COVID year, it's kind of put a little damper on some things and making it a little harder. Um, I really thought 21 class was going to be difficult, and obviously we got 42 guys committed, and we might have a few more here soon. Um, 22, I think, is going to be a little bit tougher. Um, how do you guys feel about knowing that you could be walking into a situation next year? Um, normal numbers, let's just say a school carries 36, they might have 40 now, 45 guys in that area because of COVID, because kids can come back another year. How do you feel about that? What do you what do you guys think? Um, I mean, I think it's going to be a little tougher to, to get that spot, but I mean, I'm just competitive as the next guy. I'm going to compete and try to get that spot. Good. Yeah, same thing as Kay. Just go out there, no matter how many kids there are, and just work my butt off. It makes me realize that, you know, I got to be more competitive with myself when I'm in the cages in the weight room because I got to be ready to go when I get there more than ever. Right. Well, I can tell you this, guys. You guys all three probably have a chance to make all city and and uh, all state and all league and all that don't stand on that because when you walk in the door think about all the people that are there from other states they might they're probably all city all league all state so um and college coaches could care less um, so keep that in mind um now shoot for it obviously you want the recognition that you deserve but uh don't think that just because you're like i said all state here in kansas or all city that that's going to mean something walking in the door at the next place because guarantee you those players you're playing with are as well. Uh, <clears throat> what could youth kids, 13, 14 year olds, 14, 15 year olds getting ready to go into high school, what, what advice could you give them, Alex, to uh, get better and get ready to play high school baseball? I'd say the most important thing would just be play. Like all sports, you know, the more athletic you are, the better that's going to translate to baseball. Mm -hmm. um, you know, have fun, go around, and make junior plays, you know, become athletic. Right. Uh, the biggest thing for me was always the mental aspect of the game. You, you always want to make sure that you learn that and get that instilled because uh, you, you'll definitely be ahead of everybody else if you understand the mental game, understand the approach of hitting, everything that goes with that. Yeah, I agree with Colson on that one just a lot, the mental aspect and just knowing that you're not going to get a base hit every single time or make the play every single time. Right. Okay. And the good thing about it, like you guys brought up on the uh, when we talked about the merger and all the opportunities, you know, we have Mind Time Sports here with Ray Beatty. So uh, that's a class that these kids can get into um, and, and take with Ray and, and go over some stuff. That's a that's a that's a good thing. Um, if you had a chance to change something that you were doing with, in high school, uh, what would you have done differently? I should say, um, right now that you wish you could look back on right now and say, okay, I wish I would have done this now so you're more prepared to go into the next level, okay? I definitely probably would have hit the weights a, little, like, a lot harder. I was in football, I was lifting a lot, and then when I quit football, I just kind of drifted away. But now I'm back on it, so I would have definitely kept on it. Okay, Cole? Um, I was always involved in weights, probably school. It's probably the big one. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always involved in school, but just sometimes not as much as I should be, so. Okay. Uh, I wish I would have started lifting earlier. Um, I think that's that's the, the biggest aspect that I'm behind in right now mm -hmm. because of when I started. Okay. And with uh, sharp performance in our facility as well, that's another avenue that everybody can, can go to to get some extra work out with Coach C. Um, you know, having, like you guys mentioned earlier, the coaching that we have and having Coach C who played college ball at the highest level. Um, understands, got a, had a bad injury, understands how to overcome that, coached at Hutch and now at WSU, and now he's with us. Uh, again, that's just another avenue people can have to, to uh, getting better. So that's, that's some good advice. Um, let's go here. Uh, Cole, who's your favorite Major League Baseball team? Baseball team? Yeah. Cubs. Cubs? Why? Um, I was raised to love the Cubs. Ever since I was a little kid, my grandpa and my dad loved the Cubs ever since they were little kids, so it was just kind of passed on down to me. So. Okay. Okay. The Royals. The Royals? Okay. Why? Well, I, <laughs> I just, uh, I mean, I don't know. I've been, my family likes them. I've just grown up liking them. Okay. 
Alex? I'm going to get hate for the saying this, but I'm a fan of the Yankees. Okay. Well, uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I watched Derek Jeter year growing up. Yep. You know, I loved watching him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, with Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton, Clint Frazier's my favorite player, so I have to watch him. Yeah, they tried to buy the World Series every year, and look what happens. Um, uh, no, that's good. That's good. So, uh, Coles, who's your favorite player? Javier Baez or Wilson Contreras. Okay. Why is that? Wilson Contreras, dude has, has an absolute cannon behind mm-hmm. the plate. Great defender. We're going to hit him a little bit. But, <laughs> yeah. We'll make sure he finds that out. Okay, we'll let him know. Okay. Mine's Dancy Swanson. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. He's not a Royal, so. No. Uh, I was watching him when he was at Vandy. Yeah. And then I saw, I just kind of watched him go through the, the rankings, and, it, and now he's best shortstop in the league. Francisco Lindor will have something to say about that, but I'm a huge Braves fan, so I'm going to back you up a little yeah. bit on this. And, and Alex, you mentioned that Clint Frazier is yeah. your favorite player. Why is that? Uh, you see the tweets? Pretty fire. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just like him. He's got some swagger to him. Uh-huh. He's fun to watch. Good. All right, that's something. What is something that is interesting about you that people would find pretty cool, Alex? Um, I was hit by a car. I was <laughs> <laughs> By a car? <laughs> what were you hit by a car? Well, I was in like sixth grade, right? Uh-huh. And I stole a bike from my friend. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and I was riding away, but there's a car that was blocking the road, so I couldn't see. And then I kind of got hit. <laughs> Just like that? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you were okay. Did you get in trouble for stealing the bike? Oh, 100%. Know. 100%. <laughs> he didn't even care about me. He was just mad that the bike got broken. <laughs> What about mom? I know mom had to be upset. We see, I was already grounded. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, that's good. That's a good one. All right, you guys got to try to top that. Cade, what do you got? Um, I don't know. <laughs> really good at foosball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, foosball. All right, all right. And Colton? Dude, I honestly don't know. I have. ADHD. We know it's not we golf. <laughs> no, so. <laughs> we have pretty good at we baseball. No, I I do have ADHD. Oh, did you? It makes it so hard to focus, especially like baseball, like seeing pitches and stuff, reading balls in the outfield, which kind of sucks because I'm an outfielder. But, hey, that's what it is. What it is I guess. We'll overcome it. Hey, that's what it's, that's what it's all about. Um, so, last thing here, advice, just in general for anybody. Um, could be anything on top of your head that you might have missed or wish you wanted to say. Alex, you got any advice for younger players, parents, anybody? I say when you start to struggle, stay calm. You know, you're a good player. It's not like you're just going through a rough patch. Um, my biggest issue is sometimes I get frustrated and I, I start to lose my, my um, thinking abilities. Mm-hmm. And I just go downhill even more. So staying level-headed is probably the most important thing for me. Okay. Get as much instruction as you can and try and soak up as much information as you can from, like, like you said earlier, the guys that we have in this facility and the coaches that have played and coached at the next level, just the information that they can give you, it's just incredible. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just soak up everything as much as possible and also just like, just stay out of your head because if you think about it, it just, it just gets you even worse. Well, gentlemen, first of all, I appreciate you guys coming on the show this morning. I, I really do. Uh, it was really good getting to know you a little bit better. I've had the privilege of coaching you guys here the last few years, seeing you grow up, becoming the men that you're becoming. Um, please continue to do what you're doing. Continue to get better. Strive to be that guy that you want to be. Be that that person, that adult that you want to be. Um, I hope you follow your dreams. Get as far as you can get. This is always home to you. You can always come back. Um, if you ever need anything, phone call away. And, and just like any of the other coaches that are here, they're a phone call away. We'd be more than happy to help. Um, and again, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. And that concludes this week in baseball player profiles with Alec Ronk, Colson Searing, and Kate Snodgrass. I want to thank BG Productions for producing the show. Have a nice day.